Ragnar was a uh, he was a ninth century Norse king um, that was kind of a wild man and unruly, uh, so we named it after him. So Dan calls me one day in my office and said, Dad, there's a road that goes from Midway to Park City. And I said, I know that road, but we can't do that. That's about a 4,000 foot climb. And he said, well, that'll be great. We'll just turn that into part of the mystique of the race. And we, uh, I remember actually coming to the bottom and we were like, looked at him, we were like, holy cow, like this is, this is brutal. Yeah. And Dan was like, you know, I call, my dad calls tough people Ragnars. We should call it the Ragnar. Like, oh, look, that sounds great. It was a name uh, my dad always used to, to describe kind of gnarly people, people that kind of uh, walk to the beat of their own drum. After the first race, that's what everybody was talking about, was the Ragnar Lake. At the time, road races were very serious and very targeted at, um, at runners, uh, you know, quote unquote runners, where we were more casual about it. The run was an important element, but it was sort of a byproduct of really what was happening in the van. And so everything that we did was to sort of support this magical experience of people coming together and supporting each other and you know pushing themselves and very quickly it changes from how fast you're going to run or how well you're going to do and this sort of selfish runner endeavor to coming together with your friends and accomplishing something together that you never could have done on your own. The 2 a.m. is sort of the transformative time. It's dark, you're on your second or third leg, You've already put a lot of miles in. You're probably sore. You're probably hungry. Um, it may or may not be cold, may or may not have rained a little bit, and you just have to push through. And I think the most magical time generally is when the sun comes up. It's kind of like a rebirth. It's like you've pushed through this challenge, and it's an event that you know, you've done together with all these people, and then the sun comes up, and you're kind of rejuvenated. You made it through the difficult time. It's kind of the pioneer thing. There's, there's real joy that comes from doing something together with others that's, that's hard, that requires you to push beyond what you thought were your limits. It is challenging, there's no doubt, but I think that it's very accessible for people of most any skill level because they can do it with friends. That's kind of what's special about Ragnar and I think why we all, you know, love it. You don't get a lot of opportunity in everyday life to be a conqueror, wanderer, wild man. And that's really what Ragnar brings, right? It's this, this whole experience of, of conquering something together with your friends, wandering through this adventure and not knowing exactly where you're going or how you're going to get there. 